Now, panpsychism isn't a new philosophy. It's the philosophy of nature that's often called animism, the idea there's a kind of mind or spirit or soul uh, in nature. It's found in all traditional cultures, in all shamanic cultures. It's what the Middle Ages in Europe had. Christian animism was the basis of Aristotle and St. Thomas, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas's interpretation of Aristotle. It's what the scientific revolution rejected. Um, but it's coming back again. And it's coming back again in a very interesting, sophisticated new form. The most interesting panpsychist philosopher in the 20th century was Alfred North Whitehead, a British philosopher who taught at Harvard. And he was a mathematician as well as a philosopher. He was the first philosopher to realize the implications of quantum theory. Quantum theory says that photons and electrons and quantum particles are waves. They're not particles, just particles, not little bits of matter. People previously thought that um, atoms were made of little bits of matter like billiard balls. Uh, quantum theory says, no, the fundamental reality, physical reality, is wave-like. And that's the reason for the uncertainty principle in quantum theory. You can't pin down a wave to an exact place and time. Think about a wave on the sea. You can't have a wave unless it has time to wave in or space to wave in. Uh, if you reduce it to an instant, it's not a wave. Um, so matter's made of waves, and the waves take time to wave. Um, so what Whitehead realized right at the very beginning of the quantum revolution was this means that time is built into matter. Previously, people thought it was like little billiard balls that just persisted forever, Old-style materialism is based on a view of matter. It sees it as just persisting substance. Quantum theory reveals matter as a process. And if it's a process in time, each electron, each process in time, has a past pole and a future pole. There's, the future pole is where it's going, the past pole is where it's come from, and it's spread out between future and past. What Whitehead argued, I think fascinatingly, is that the key to understanding the relation of mind and body is not to see them as inside and outside. That's the usual metaphor, is spatial, you know, the inner life, the outer world. The relation of mind and body is the relation in time. The mind is the future pole, the body is the past pole. Um, the mind is concerned with possibilities. Our minds are filled with possibilities. Consciousness is, to, is a field of possibility and its main function is to choose among possible actions. So our minds are filled with virtual futures, virtual possibilities. As soon as we make a choice and put it into action, then it becomes a physical fact, but by then it's in the past. Every one of us decided to come here this evening and it's a measurable fact that we're in this room. Um, but there was a time in the past when uh, we were deciding among different things we could have done this evening. We could have done something else. Um, we could have come here. Once we decided to come here and did it, it becomes a physical fact. But before we did it, it was something in the future, one of other possibilities in the future among which we chose. And consciousness is, as it were, the realm of possibilities, virtual futures. Now, even electrons have something like that. The Schrodinger wave equation in quantum mechanics is an equation that tells you all the things an electron can do. As soon as an electron starts moving, the wave equation describes all its possible actions. It describes all possible actions that electron could perform. And as soon as the electron interacts with something, it collides with an atom or something, or, or a photographic film, um, those possibilities collapse down to the one thing that actually happens. This is sometimes called the collapse of the wave function. But as soon as that happens, it's in the past. And a new set of future possibilities opens up. These future possibilities are not physical facts. Possibilities are not physical. They're mental. Um, they're to do with possible futures. Um, and until they've happened, you can't measure them. But when they've happened, they're not a possibility anymore. They're a fact. So... This idea of whiteheads applies even to electrons as well as to humans and I think is the best way of conceiving panpsychism. The role of the mind in any self-organizing system is what gives the system its goals, its possibilities and insofar as there's an element of choice then the consciousness, if there's any consciousness involved then that's what it's doing, choosing among possible actions. Now most 
activity, including most of our own activity, is habitual. We don't need to choose most of the time because we follow habits. But insofar as we're making choices among possibilities, that's where consciousness comes in. Well, um, this was Whitehead's theory, um, and I think it makes the most sense uh, of what's happening. The interesting thing is, you see, that it shows that any self-organizing system would have this mental pole as well as a physical pole. Most discussion of panpsychism concerns electrons. Now, it's hard to get excited about the mental life of an electron, uh, but the whole thing becomes much more interesting when we think about big self-organizing systems. And the one I like thinking about most is the sun, 